Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. Recently, in the blog post, we found out that Dragonflight has got additional updates on the horizon, with the patch 1026 arriving in March, followed after by Season 4 updates hitting the PTR, with the War Within Alpha hitting somewhere in between if we are to go off of the 2024 roadmap. For some players, this means you're taking a break up until March, but for others, you're looking to find something to do to keep yourself occupied up until then. And while waiting for new updates recently, I started to do a little bit more collections all of my own, by collecting new forms for druids with a patch 10.2, new demon summons with a 10.25 update, and even some of the mounts you can earn from the Emerald Dream Zone, which we made a guide for on this channel. So for today's video, I wanted to put together a list of mounts that you can get up until new content arrives in Dragonflight and the War Within, with some of the mounts that you can earn solo without having to do group content with other players. At the same time, I didn't really want to fill this list full of mounts that require ridiculous amount of RNG or endless boss grinds before you can obtain them, but rather a selection of actually kind of rare and even uncommon mounts that you can go out and get right now in order to help expand your mount collection. But right before we get into today's video, most of you guys watching these kind of updates are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight, Patch 10 to 6, Season 4, or The War Within, or any of the future updates going forward. In no particular order, the first mount on this list will be the Slime Serpent, which is a mount that you can obtain from one of the regions of the Shadowlands expansion. To get this mount, you head over to the Plagueful Dungeon in the Muldraxxus Zone, and you gotta defeat all of the bosses on Heroic or Mythic difficulty as a solo player which is fairly easy to do as a level 70 max level character. You can't really skip any of the bosses, but a level 70 character shouldn't really need a lot of gear in order to be able to complete this challenge, especially if you set the instance to heroic. After you defeat the final boss of this instance, you'll have to walk backwards and then click on a portal to go back up towards the third boss arena room. Outwards, you will be able to run a little further near the slime pools to find yourself a slime serpent that you can now tame. Back in Shadowlands, this solo challenge was actually kind of difficult for the time, but a ton of fun. But now it serves as an easy avenue for you to get another mount to add to your collection. The next mount on this list will be the Colossal Ebonclaw, which is a Shadowlands mount that you can get from the Jailer's Gauntlet event in the Torghast area. The Torghast fights and all of the mobs in there are actually of lower level than a max level 70 character. This means that all of the enemies inside will actually take more damage from you and will deal less damage to you, which makes that whole piece of content much much easier to get through. To get access to this mount, you'll have to complete the layer 4 of the Jailer's Gauntlet. So you may need to start out at layer 1 if you've never done Torghast in the past and then go up layer by layer. Each layer goes by fairly quick, with only 8 floors per layer for you to ascend through. And while there, you might as well experiment with some of the powers that were available for all our classes back when Torghast was concurrent content. The next mount is going to be one of the newer additions for the Dragonflight expansion, the Temperamental Skyclaw mount, which is a fairly easy mount to get. Normally, to earn this mount, you have to kill a variety of different gnolls found all over Azure Span to collect 3 types of meat the Tuscar Jerky, the Nolan's House Special, and the Flash Frozen Meat. Nowadays, all of these items can simply be bought on the Auction House, but if you're a little bit behind on gold, then this is where you can actually directly farm all of these items. You'll want to go after the Snow Hide Gnolls, which are found north of the Camp Nowhere, near the Frozen Waterfall and the nearby Tower. The Dark Tooth Gnolls can also be found in the Dark Tooth Pond, near the river that leads out of the Azure Vault. The Stormfang Gnolls can be found near northeast of the Tuscar village near a river right by a lake. And once you get 20 of each reagent, you'll need to head over to the Three Falls Lookout flight point and talk to a troll named Zanwogi, give him all of the meats, and then you'll be able to add yet another mount to your collection. If you want to add 8 easy mounts to your mount collection, you can also go after the Drakthir Vorquin mount, which can be bought while leveling a new Drakthir Evoker character. All you have to do is make a new Drakthir character, and then do the main intro questline for the Drakthir up until you can encounter a Drakthir vendor Treish outside of the vaults where the Drakthir was left in their stasis. You can also find Treish in Valdraken, however, if you do have an Evoker and you missed him out before. Drag Theory Evoker characters can buy these mounts outright without any issues for very little gold. But if you do end up trying to buy them on another character that is not a Drag Theory Evoker, you may need to do a little bit of rep form before you can unlock them. 
but the easiest way to get them is to make a new Draxir, do a bit of the questline, and then buy them from Treyush directly. Another Dragonflight mount that's fairly easy to obtain is the Magma Shell. To get your hands on the Magma Shell, you first need to get your hands on an empty Magma Shell, which can either be purchased for roughly 1000 gold in the auction house, or by killing snails found near the Citadel in the Waking Shore. After you get yourself the magma shell, head over to the northern area of the waking shore near the lava pools and look out for an empowered snail found towards the bottom of lava. This mount will have a short respawn time, so if another player did grab it and you don't see it, then you may have to wait a little bit of time before the mount will spawn again. But once you see the mount, all you have to do is swim under lava and then right click the snail, where your character will channel for 20 seconds to obtain this mount. However, you are swimming in lava and will continue to take continuous damage over time, so you may need to use summon to help mitigate that damage. One of the classes that has the easiest time doing this mount is the Paladin, who could just bubble, generating a little bit of immunity for a short amount of time while being able to get this mount. Shamans could also do this if they go restoration spec and drop a bunch of their healing totems before they jump into the lava. But as long as you're able to either immune the damage or find some way to heal yourself with a healing over time effect while channeling on the snail long enough to complete the channel, then you should be able to grab the mount. It doesn't matter if you end up dying at the end of the channel, as long as you finish the channel you obtain the mount, even if you have to do a corpse run afterwards. Another easy Dragonflight mount that I can recommend is the Stormhide Salamander, which is ridiculously easy to obtain. You first need to get 2000 elemental aura flow currency from any of the open world activities, but one of the best ones will be to go to the Forbidden Reach and then kill rares and do events in the Forbidden Reach until you get enough of this currency. Then you go back to Valdraken and you simply have to buy it from a vendor for 2000 elemental aura flow currency. Zenith Hatchling is another mount that I think it's worth your time if you want to get more mounts within Dragonflight. It drops from a rare spawn of Zenith Avis which does have somewhat of a long respawn time, but if you do end up slaying it, you get yourself a guaranteed mount in a form of an egg that you need to wait a couple of days until it turns into a mount. The rare can be found somewhere between the Tirakai and the Shady Sanctuary in the Onaran Plains. Nowadays, players don't really farm for this mount as much anymore, which means that now there's a slightly higher likelihood that if you were to go and check on its respawn, that will likely be there. If anything, you can hop on different characters on multiple servers, or even turn on war mode to see if it will be up then. But I wouldn't really camp out for this mount at all. I would just come by that area once in a while to see if it's available, otherwise spend your time working on other mounts instead. Going back to the expansion of Shadowlands, another mount that's fairly easy to get is the Shimmer Mist Runner. All you have to do to obtain this mount is do the maze puzzle in the Ardenweald area, the night phase zone of the Shadowlands expansion, in a very specific order. The easiest way to do this puzzle is to look out for blue lanterns to help guide you through this maze. You will first start this maze at the top of the ramp and then you'll go all the way down. And then you will take your first left following the lanterns. Afterwards you will take your right and then from there you want to be very careful to look out for the blue lantern. Not the red lantern, the blue lantern which can either be a high up above or down below but the lanterns will help lead you through the puzzle all the way. If you did the puzzle correctly, you should be able to see Shimmer Mist as well as another mob next to it. Slay the blue gremlin looking thing and then you'll be able to add Shimmer Mist into your mound collection. Now let's move over to a whole other expansion of Battle for Azeroth, where you have a ton of Warfront mounds that you can collect from the various Warfront zones. When your faction controls a Warfront area, such as the Arathi or the Darkshore, you can then go to that area to kill rares for a chance at a mount. And there are a few different mounds for you to collect depending on your faction, the Alliance or the Horde. I marked them on this map with a rough location of where some of these rares are. Some of them like the Albino Rapture Mount does end a path and kind of up and down the area of the Troll Village, but for the most part this is a pretty good idea of where most of them are going to be. The red or the orange markers are going to be for the Horde only version of these mounts, while the green are going to be more for the Alliance only versions. As part of the Battle for Azeroth Warfronts, we also have another Warfront of the Dark Shore, which also has a quite a few mounts for you to collect, also depending on your faction. These are some of the rough locations, but you can get anything from flying mounts to ground mounts, and there are some options for Alliance and Horde in a very similar vein as the Arathi mounts included. They also cannot be farmed once a day, like most rares do. They instead can be only farmed once every Warfront rotation. So, for example, if Alliance controls Darkshore, you can send all of your ults to Darkshore, try your chance at the mount from all of these rares, and then you don't revisit Darkshore again until your faction controls it all over again. 
Now, all of these mounts do have a little bit of RNG involved with them. They're not going to be as rare as Invincible, perhaps, but they have roughly a 5% drop rate. You also cannot farm them once a day. Instead, each one of your characters will have a 5% chance to obtain the mount from these sprayers per Warfront rotation. As in, if let's say your faction controls Darkshore, and then you go farm with these sprayers for these mounts on every single one of your ults, you don't really come back again afterwards. Instead, you have to wait until your faction loses the zone, and then later, a couple of days after, regains the zone again for you to go back there and refarm all of these sprayers. Which sounds like a little bit of a convoluted system, but it does stop you from having to grind out the area every single day on every one of your alts. Instead, check in once in a while to see if your faction controls certain areas of either Warfront, and when it's available, go and farm it out for all of your rares on your characters, and then you can wait until the next rotation is available. Another mount that you can easily obtain from the expansion of Legion is the Smoldering Amber Worm, which can be found in the Legion version of the Karazhan Dungeon. To do this, you have to enter the Legion version of Karazhan from the side entrance on Mythic Difficulty. Next, you'll have to scour the entire dungeon in order to find five memory crystals. To do this, you'll first head to the Opera Fight, and then past it, you'll see a crystal right in the center of the crowd watching the play. After you grab that crystal, head over outside of the audience hall, and then take a left, then a right, and way down the hall. And just in the room left right before the Maiden boss, you'll find another crystal in one of the bedrooms. Then head back out into the balcony and then go kill Morose to grab a crystal right behind him. Also be sure to grab the keys right before you leave. Out into the main hall, down the stairs you'll find an area where to the right will be the Midnight's Stables, which gives you a chance at another boss if you want to do so, but on the left is where we'll want to go into the Beast in Spider Quarters, where at the end of all of the rooms you'll find a crystal next to a portal. Click the crystal and then click the portal to take yourself back towards the front of the entrance. From there, you'll take a left and then go up to the stairs all the way up into the menagerie to kill the boss there, click his crystal, and then you'll head back downwards. When you head back down towards the entrance of this instance, on your left there should now be an open door that lets you go into the outside of Karazhan where you should be able to see a shade of Medivh. Interact with it in order to be able to witness a long lost memory of his encounter with a blue dragon. After a while, the dragon will turn into the next boss that you must slay in order to get a chance at the Karazhan mount. The mount's drop rate as of right now is 20%, which is rather high. If you do this on multiple characters, at least one of them should hopefully be able to get it, unless you have rotten luck like I do. To finish this video off, we have another array of mounts that you can earn from the Dragonflight expansion through the Time Rift public activity added back in the patch 10.15. You can find Time Rifts and Time Rift vendors all the way in the center of Thaldrazis. There you'll be able to earn a specific currency that you can trade in for guaranteed mounts to add to your collection. Every single one of these vendors will have an iconic time-specific mount, or rather recolor of one of those time-specific mounts for you to earn. Whether you're looking at a Legion theme mounts, Wrath of Lich King theme mounts, Battle for Azeroth theme mounts, and the like. To earn the currency to purchase some of these mounts, you can either participate in the time rifts, but the best way to do this is to join a pre-made group in the LFG in order to make completing some of the time rift activities much much easier than you would as a solo player. Technically, participating in all the activities, depending on how much progress you do as a group, does help you earn a little bit more of the Paracausal Flakes, which is the currency that you'll use to buy these mounts, however it's not really necessary. It's optional and you can join groups if you want to have some fun with it, but the very bare minimum that you have to do is stick around up until the event ends. When it ends, a portal will spawn in the center of Thaldrazis that will take you to the boss encounter of this time rift. Once you defeat the boss of the time rift, this is where you get a good portion of your Paracausal Flakes that you can use to purchase its mounts. Also, every single time you defeat a boss, there's a chance that one of the items on the time rift vendors can also drop from that boss. This means that some of the mounts on these vendors has a chance of dropping also. But even if you don't get all that lucky, Time Rift still offers you a way to get a currency that can eventually be traded in for mounts to further add to your collection. And for now, this is going to be the full list of mounts that you can get now in order to expand your collection while waiting for some of the new content to arrive to Dragonflight and beyond. 
I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.